Hey there, Alex here from Nintu, and in this video I'm going to show you the complete setup of Tailwind or Winden website on WordPress and Bricks Builder, and all the settings to configure to have both fluid typography, fluid spacing, as well as using your own brand colors so that you can easily import templates from the Nintu website. So starting off, we're going to jump into our new website dashboard. And I've got a mostly fresh install here. Uh, but the first two things we want to do is head over to our plugins and install the Winden plugin. So you can see I've got it here. If you don't have it yet, just click on Add New, Upload Plugin, and then drop in the Winden plugin file. Next up, we're going to go over to Appearance, Themes, and we're going to install the Bricks theme. Now, if you haven't added Bricks, it's pretty much the same setup. Go over here, click Add New, Upload Theme, and you drop in your Bricks Builder theme. You then just need to activate your license for both Bricks Builder and Winden, and we're ready to kick off. So, first thing we're going to do together is set up some essential styling for Bricks. And we're going to do this in the Winden settings. So click over here, and you can see we've got some global CSS here that will load for all of the pages on our website. So I'm going to jump back over to our little article here. And we're at step two at this stage, setting up style essentials for Bricks. So there's four things that we want to do. The first one is what I call Bricks Body Styles. And it's a few lines of CSS that essentially helps you speed up the way that you build your websites and you don't need to worry about things falling off the page. I don't know if you've ever used or built a mobile site before, and had this problem where there's horizontal scrolling so people can scroll left to right because something is overlapping outside of the container or going outside of the viewport. So this first setting will essentially prevent that from happening. That means we can build pretty freely, add whatever we want to add, and if anything ever falls outside of the viewport, it will just be cut off. Second thing we're gonna add is scroll bar styling. Now, this is just a little bit of a fancy. You can see that we have it on the website here, but switching out the default blocky gray scroll bar um, for something that's closer to your brand and to your website look and feel. Then we're going to add HTML font size settings. Now this is just a default setting. In most cases, this is already applied on a website, but with Bricks Builder, they change this by default. They have a default set as 64.5, which is essentially we want to set it to 100% because a lot of what we're doing and will be based on that initial typography size. So we want it to be 100% so we can define it correctly. And then last but not least, if you're using Shortcut, there's a small conflict that happens with Shortcut and Bricks, uh, and we've got a couple of lines of CSS to add to fix that conflict. So I'm going to grab the code here, so go ahead and copy that, jump over to my website, go to my global CSS here on Winden. I'm going to get rid of everything that was here before and paste that in. Going back to my tutorial, I'm now going to set up my fluid typography and spacing. So fluid typography and spacing is essentially spacing and type that scales, so it shrinks or grows depending on the viewport size. Here you can see that it's slightly getting smaller as we pull it in or pull it out depending on what browser size we'd be looking. So we've already configured everything you need for fluid typography and fluid spacing. You can pretty much grab it as it is and copy paste it into your website. If you want to customize it, you can go ahead and ed edit the clamp sizes here, um, but we're just going to copy and paste because we're pretty happy with what we've got as a default here. So copy that, jump back to our wind and settings. Right at the bottom here, I'll start a new line and I'll just paste that in. I can see here, I now have my bricks body styles, so that overlap preventing it from happening, my scroll bar styling, my default bricks font size, and now my fluid spacing and fluid typography. And you can see here it sets up for the type as well as for the spacing. I'm pretty happy with that, so I'm just going to scroll all the way down, and save changes. Next up, we're going to generate our brand colors. So the way Tailwind works, and it's a very good system, is it generates essentially 10 shades 
for your primary color and 10 shades for your neutral color. Now, off the bat, that might seem like quite a lot of colors or a lot of shades, but you'll quickly realize that as you're working with types of utilities, components, buttons, as well as having variations in both light mode and dark mode, more often than not, on, an, on a single website, you will be using all 10 colors. So for example, if I was to set my background as shade 100, the color of the text on top of that background would be between the three to 500 range. We'll skip a number or two. And then same thing, maybe one of very bright, vivid background, we set that as 500, then the text that would be on top of that would probably be between 300 and 50. Same applies then for our neutral colors. So there's a great handy little tool out there that helps you generate all of this automatically. All you need to do is plug in your brand colors. So I've linked it on the site here. I just click on this link and I'll open up in a new tab. And it's a tool by Simon Griggs that looks something like this. You can see here we have our neutral palette at the top, which is essentially our grays, and then our primary palette just below, which is our bright colors. You can add a secondary cut palette if you wanted to as well. I want to change my primary color. Jump on here. I can either paste in my main primary color. So I'm gonna add a new one for this example. Let's choose a green. Something like that looks pretty good. Jumping over to our neutrals, you can set our neutral color. I like to start off in my primary and then drag the color wheel across to a gray and you know it's gonna be of a similar tone. So I can see if I scroll down on this page that it's now generated some code that I can use with my neutral colors and my primary colors. I'm gonna leave this open for now because we'll come back to it in a second as we finish the configuration of Linden. So we've now generated our colors, generated all of our fluid type and our base CSS settings. We essentially wanna tell Tailwind to bring it all together and to all work and interact with each other. So we're gonna configure four things on Tailwind then. Dark mode, and this is essentially just telling it that we want it to be enabled and that we want to be able to toggle between light and dark mode. Our brand colors, and this will be telling Tailwind, hey, here are our brand colors. And when you import templates from Nintu, make sure you're matching them to these brand colors. Our fluid type, and that's that typography scale that as you get smaller screens, get smaller as you get bigger screens it gets bigger and our spacing scale and it's the same thing as our typography but it's for all of our paddings and margins grab everything that we have here copy that jump over my wind and settings and this time i'm going to go to the tailwind config tab and i'll paste everything in there Having a look at it, I can see that my dark mode is now set to class, which will allow us to toggle. Our colors are defined as our primaries and our neutrals. Our font size is the variable fluid font size that we've set, and our spacing is the variable fluid spacing that we've set. Last thing I wanna do here is update my colors to the colors that I've defined for my brand. So jumping back over to our color palette generator, See here we have neutral and primary colors. And on our wind and config, you can see that we have primary and neutral colors. We just don't have the full letters spelt out as P for primary and N for neutral, so that when you're creating a new color class, you don't need to type primary every time, you can just type P. Jump to my editor here. I'm gonna grab my primary colors, everything between the brackets, copy it, jump back over to my website, select everything between the brackets again, and paste that in. I'm then gonna jump over to my neutrals, select everything again between the brackets, copy it, back over to Winden, select everything between the brackets, and paste it in again. And that's pretty much it. We've now defined our primary and neutral colors. Uh, so then go ahead and save your changes, and assuming your website is ready to go live, you'll toggle on the cached CSS instead of the CDN. And I like to disable it for the admin. And what this means is it's no longer pulling in the entire library. It's only pulling in what you have created on your website. So what this does is it turns on the worker, 
what the worker will do is it will scan all of your different pages, find your Tailwind classes, cache those, and then get rid of all the rest. So you're really only loading the bare minimum. You can see here on this demo site, I've got seven kilobytes of CSS file, and this is before any GZIP or any caching plugins have been turned on, which is a really, really small CSS file. So I'm ready to go live. Uh, I'm going to regenerate my cache. All successful, we're good to go. So we're gonna jump into our Bricks Builder template now. We're gonna open up an Intu template, and I'll pull it across to show you how it works. So we're now gonna jump into our pages, all pages, create a new page. Just call this one test two, three, four, five for now. Publish that page and edit with bricks. Jump over to the Nintu website. I'm gonna to go to the templates tab. And I'm gonna start finding a few templates that I like. So let's start off with a hero, jump into hero templates. Let's go with this one I copy for wind and bricks. Then jump over to my new page that I just created on bricks, and press control V. And you can see it pulls in that section and it's also automatically updated the colors to the brand colors that we applied in the earlier steps. It doesn't pull in the pictures, so you just have to click on your area that has a picture, select your image element, and then go ahead and then select the picture that you want. We'll do a few more sections as an example. Uh, so let's do a content section. This one, content 01. This one, jump back over. Just make sure you've deselected the image so that it doesn't paste that element on the image. Paste it in, there we go, my section's there. I'm gonna go find my image tab or image component and replace the picture too. Let's pick this one in the forest. Got a nice green theme going. That is pretty much all you need to do to create fast, highly scalable websites that never slow down because you're only ever pulling in the CSS that you need and a customizable and tailored to your customer, to your own brand's websites with your own colors that scale as you have different mobile device types and sizes and that a lot of it is just automated and works quite well for you. That's pretty much all we have for the tutorial today. Let me know if you have any questions. Feel free to read the article, subscribe to Nintu if you'd like to subscribe to Nintu, um, and ping me either through the website or on Facebook if you'd like to. Um, if you have any questions, always here to help and very happy to do so. But otherwise, thank you for watching. Have a lovely day. Subscribe if you want to too, and I'll catch you in the next video.